we, we never got the chance to ask you in the administration, or at least you wouldn't answer when you were in the administration, what, what you thought about Fed policy. The Fed's obviously in a pretty tricky spot right here. And the big debate in the markets mm -hmm. is how quickly should they be raising rates? Are they behind the curve? Are we going to be able to get our arms around inflation? Will they do too much damage to the economy by raising too quickly? I just wonder which side of the, the debate you come down on, what would you like to see happen? Well, now it, it is more fun. This is one of the few things I can freely talk about now. I couldn't talk about the Fed. I mean, as, as, you, as you know, Jay Powell and I are very close. You put uh, him in the job. I, I, I did encourage the president to, to put him in the job. Uh, look, I, I, I personally think the Fed needs to be aggressive now in combating inflation. For, for a very long period of time, the Fed could not get inflation to 2 percent. Uh, Powell changed it to where they said they do it to 2 percent over time. I think at the time pre-COVID that was the right thing to do. Uh, you know, I, I would have stopped the COVID spending. We spent $4 trillion. That was a lot. Uh, I think we've got to cut back on this ongoing government funding. But there's no question in my mind if the Fed raises interest rates and if the Fed begins to run off the portfolio, that's going to have a big impact on inflation. Whether he raises 25 or 50 basis points, I saw the comment yesterday that he said 25. I, I think what he does at any single uh, meeting is less important. I think the question is, where are we a year from now, you know, 18 months from now, I think we'll be at two, two and a half percent Fed funds and three, three and a half percent I mean, 10 years. Where do you think the economy is going to be, though, a year from now? I mean, given, given the inflationary pressures uh, that we've already seen and given what may turn out to be even higher oil prices. Well, let me just say, I think, you know, the economy continues to be very strong, but we're going to see a divergence in how businesses do. So the, there's no question. Businesses that have high wages as of a component and low margins are going to have issues. And businesses that have high margins, particularly right. tech companies, we're very focused on cybersecurity, are, are going to continue to see very robust, very robust growth. So I think we're going to see two things. Oil, look, for a long time, we've had the best benefit of cheap oil. I mean, $50, $60 oil has been incredibly cheap oil. You know, in the context of long periods of time, $100 to $110 oil is not super expensive. It's something we need to adjust to. And I think the oil markets will normalize and go back. So down. what does that look like? And, and I ask because, yes, on a, on a relative basis, prices may, may, may not seem astronomical, but on a relative basis, which is how people live, it feels astronomical. It does, and, and I'm not minimizing there are short-term adjustments, and that is going to impact people and businesses and something we're going to need to deal with. I think the administration needs to be working with our allies around the world on energy policy. I think one of the most important issues for national security is, is that the U.S. is energy independent. I personally, not, not to minimize the environmental issues, but, but now is the time to reconsider things like pipelines, things like uh, LNG, which are a much, uh, a much cleaner form of, of energy to focus on carbon recapture. But, but now is the time when I would be unleashing more oil out of the strategic reserve to stabilize the markets. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.